If you're like me, you probably have several reasons for your interest in genetic genealogy. Maybe it's as simple as, where did I get my eye color, or as complex as, I have doubts about my parentage. Other folks are rightfully concerned about diseases that might run in their families, like Alzheimer's. I was also curious about the historical events and geographic settings that shape my regional culture. That makes me wonder if there's something called genetic memory at work in us. I don't know. It's hard to discount the value of a paper trail in connecting the generations of our families, but sometimes unknown adoptions, extramarital relationships, and out of wedlock births, especially those that were covered up, can give us a false picture of our genetic history. With that said though, genetic genealogy can help us reconcile or even validate the stories told at family get-togethers. It can also be used to check the accuracy of our paper trails. So, today on the vantage point, I want to use my own paper trail as well as the results of a deep ancestry analysis to see if ancestry DNA is better than family tree DNA. I hope you'll join me. Family histories etched in the mind of a gifted storyteller or written down in the blank pages of the Bible are the most obvious places to start a quest to learn about one's family history. So that's where I'll begin. Like most of my friends from the South, I was told by members of my mom's family that they didn't know where our folks came from, but they claimed that my maternal great-great-grandmother was on the Doss Rolls as a Cherokee Indian. She was 1 16th. On my dad's side, it was my fifth great-grandmother who was Cherokee. Knowing this, I wondered if DNA could prove it. Since Native American DNA is distinct from European and African DNA, I thought it might stand out in DNA test results, and it does. I then found out that genetic genealogy is often conducted for at least two reasons, the recent past and the distant past. I'll leave it to other folks to explain the technical aspects of how that's done. I was absent the day that the teacher went over that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> By following my paper trail, I discovered that I should be 1.56% Native American. I should point out that ethnicity does not always pass evenly through the generations, so I wasn't looking for an exact estimate. You can see that the, in the figure that I'm posting here on the screen, you can see that the bottom figure is where my native ancestor appears on the old family tree. The top left columns show my percentage of anticipated native DNA. Now, let's compare that figure to DNA data collected and analyzed by the National Geographic Society as part of its Geno2 project. A few years ago, I submitted those data to GedMatch.com and I ran a Eurogenes K9 procedure, and here's what I found. Clearly, I'm mostly of Northern European descent. That's not a surprise. The further back in time we go, though, my genes move toward the east and the hearth of humanity. These data suggest that there were several major waves of migration from the eastern Mediterranean region into Europe and Asia. Now, look at the figure for North Amerindian plus Arctic. It's 1.45%. The gen match percentage is close to my anticipated percentage of 1.56. Again, ethnicity doesn't always move through our family lines in a perfect mathematical manner, like, for instance, 100%, 50%, 25%, 12.5%, .5%, etc. Now, let's look at Ancestry.com. Keep in mind that this company is really into looking at recent populations of people, so that causes some discounting of genetic noise in the older populations that make up our family tree. With that out of the way, let's check out the results of my ancestor DNA test. We can see that my Northern European genes were on full display in Ancestry's labs. Based on my known family surnames, I should be about half Scottish followed in descending order by English, Irish, Welsh, Norman French, and Swiss German. As you can see from the screenshot from Ancestry, its estimates are close. There is a preponderance of Scottish and Northern European genes. But I don't see any Native American DNA. Where is it? I know that some people think that less than 2% is genetic noise. Was it discounted? I don't know. This leads me to think that Ancestry.com is less precise in their estimates than family tree DNA. What makes me think that? Well, now let's turn our attention to my estimates that were provided by family tree DNA. The actual map of what family tree DNA calls England, Scotland, and Wales also covers Ulster in Ireland, the Isle of Man in the Irish Sea, all of Scotland, all of Normandy and Britain, which are in France. It even includes about half of the Netherlands. 
The family tree DNA population description of the region includes the Celts, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, and other invaders who settled across the Isles. And that, it's as correct as ancestry DNA. It just gives a bit more information about some of that genetic noise. Their system detected by a tiny bit of Native American and Asian, including that from the Caucasus region. The other differences that I see is in the 2% Swedish. Which is the best? At the end of the day, I know you're keen to know which one is the better investment. First, you might want to know that an Ancestry DNA test can be bought for less than $100 and as low as $49. If you want to know your Y chromosome and mitochondrial haplogroups, it'll cost you a few hundred dollars more. Ancestry.com doesn't offer that service, but you can get every DNA test there is for Ancestry through Family Tree DNA. I think both are excellent in providing ethnicity estimates. Ancestry.com is based in Utah. I'm not sure if it's affiliated with the Mormon Church, but that faith system does place a premium on ancestries. They've been heavily involved in collecting paper trail documents for decades. So you can get all kinds of materials through Ancestry.com that you can't get through Family Tree DNA. Looking ahead, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I've read good things about 23andMe and my heritage. I have no reservations about recommending them. I don't think you have anything to worry about. It's good fun to research your heritage, even including DNA. So if you are on the fence about which one to buy, get two. I did. Before you do, write down what you want to know or learn about yourself. Do you want more regional clarity or are you okay with larger classifications like Europe versus Western Europe? If you're interested in deep ancestry or more recent migratory movements, consider all those before you buy one. I recommend that you read about the tests and make a choice based on what you want to know. Remember, they don't answer the same questions. Oh yeah, when you get your results, upload the data to GEDmatch.com. It'll show you more about your deep ancestry that some DNA companies discount as genetic noise. Well, that's all I have for you today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to The Vantage Point. Uh, we are well into a series on the origins and meanings of Appalachian and Southern surnames, and even if you live in other parts of the country, you might find your name there. Today, we have posted 40 episodes. As a historical geographer, I have other interests too, and most of them are shown in videos on YouTube. Until I see you again, I hope the good Lord smiles on you and yours. Bye-bye.